Hey guys, this is Jerry. Um, in this video, I'm gonna go through all the features on this Volkswagen T Rock Life. So, this bigger vehicle is a 2021 model, um, so the 2022. This is a news and spec. So, it's a base model 1.5 liter turbocharged 110 kilowatts. So, I'll go through all the features um, for this vehicle and um, I'll leave a timestamp below. So you can click in between different sections and bars to skip different features, all that things. So let's start from the key. So with the vehicle key, you get lock and unlock and boot release. Obviously that only unlocks the tailgate. It does not go automatically way up. This is just a manual tailgate. And, um, yeah. and you have the key blade. You won't use it until you come to an emergency situation where your key runs out of battery or your car runs out of battery. You can use this to lift this cover up and use the manual key to switch on a bit uh, to open the door basically and as long as we have the key with us we can access to the front doors simply by press your finger here and when the vehicle locks up and use your hand in the hand rule that opens up just like that it doesn't work on the back by the way just only works at the front and if we go to the back so to open the um, tailgate just push the logo on the top that lifts up just like that so this is the boot compartment at the lower floor by the way you are able to lift this up to this level so it's nice and flat underneath we have a spare wheel jack and tools for news and spec and if we lift this up all the way we can do this now you can see this is nice and flat to take stuff in and out you can take this off if you need to just take down the hook and you can drop the seat uh, it's on either end of the seat so seat top so just over there put that button that will lift it down and again you can drop this down as well just take it out and slide it underneath and on this one because it's a manual tailgate you just have to pull and drop like that so petrol tank it's on the driver's side just push that open as long as the door central locking is open uh, minimum 95 recommended in new zones so premium fuel only for petrol behind the seats so to put on the seats just pull this and drop down the seats just like that you also get a armrest plus two cup holders you do have a ski hatch so you can pull this this drops in so if you want longer items at the back and um, behind the seats you do have air vents switch on and off and a couple usb-c charging points so to charge your devices and this is usb-c by the way if you're vehicle if your uh, phone cable is USB-A something like that you do need to buy new cables connect to USB-C so you get SO fix points for baby seats yeah and seat belts obviously in there pockets and pockets on this side so everything's pretty simple at the back let's go to the front so jump to the front you find this badge on the driver's side that's your tire pressure monitoring uh, tire pressure recommendations the KPA BAR PSI, so it depends on where you go. And driver seats, that's manual adjustments. This is going up and down. This is for the recline for the back seats and lumbar support for the driver seat and sliding it's just underneath over there, forward backwards. On the driver door handle, you get lock for the windows and rear window control, front window control, and windmill switches. So off position, that means the windmill is off. Switch left, up and down, left and right. To adjust the left wimmer, switch to right, adjust the right wimmer. You get heated wimmer as well function on this one, so that means just point this arrow to the heated wimmer um, button, and the wimmer will heat up in the winter morning, for example. You can manually fold in the wimmer as well, otherwise, when you lock the vehicle, it automatically folds in, in the default setting. And door handle and central locking, it's very simple. So let's jump in. So to start the vehicle up, so you just simply tap the foot on the brake with enough pressure and press this button, the vehicle starts. If you didn't press the brake and press this button, only the electronic part will switch on. And let's go from the right hand side. This is the auto light control. So you can leave the vehicle on auto lights obviously all the time. And the vehicle will switch on, switch off the lights for you. Otherwise, leave it off, auto, just parking light. And so the low beam headlight. Otherwise, switch back to auto. You'd all notice also the uh, fog lights as well. So if you want to switch on the fog lights, when you switch manually the uh, low beam light on, just pull it back, pull it towards you. You can see now the front fog light is on. 
who is second all the way, you can now see the rear fog light is on. So that's how to control the fog light. If you push it all the way back, when it's flat, that means the fog light is off. Again, pull once, front fog light, pull second, rear fog light, push it forward, no fog light. Same as the auto, it's the same way. And then going to the steering. So behind the steering, we have the indicators on the left. So up and down, European style. And flash by pulling against the steering. You can see the blue light over there. And if you want to switch on high beam, just push it forward. You will need to make sure your low beam light is on first. Push it forward. And that's for the high beam. Push it backwards, high beam off. Otherwise, leave on auto. And other things on the right hand side, we get wind, a windscreen wiper. So it's called a rain sensing wiper, by the way. So we, for example, at the moment the positions are off, so it doesn't do anything. Obviously, if you push it down, you only wipe once. That's one times. And if you go up, that's on automatic again uh, right now. So when you're on automatic, just switch this left and right. That allows you to adjust the wiper sensitivity. So it's on auto wiper, obviously. Least and max on the left, least on the right, maximum. Otherwise, you can switch to low. That means it's gonna run on low speed and high speed all the way up. Otherwise, pull it back to off position. And for rear wiper, um, then just push it forward. You can hear the rear wiper is walking and pull it backwards. Rear wiper is off. If you do want to watch the front windscreen, pull it hold against the steering. That's for the front wiper. And if you do want to watch the rear wiper, push and full hold. That's for the rear wiper. And pull it back. So off position, nothing going on. And other things on the steering, so on the dashboard, maybe. So we'll show you on the left, that's your um, rev counter and your, how do you say, water temperature. You can see that's going up to normal. And in the center, that's your digital display. We'll go back to that later. On the right hand side, that's your uh, speedo, the traditional analog dial, plus your fuel tank. Uh, fuel tank at the moment is full, and you can see the arrow on there. That means the fuel tank is on the right hand side, on the driver's side. If you, you can see your trip, which is at the bottom, and you can reset by pressing hold this button, and reset back to zero, and that's your odometer for this vehicle is 2817. And digital speedo, time, and uh, this is your gear selector, plus your safety system is over there. So everything's on there. And go back to the steering functions. So on the right hand side, we get voice command. Unfortunately, that does not uh, is not available on this particular vehicle in New Zealand, so that doesn't work at all. And then we get different uh, switches, left and right, to change your speedo display sort of thing. So left and right allows you to go to different menus. So I'm going to go right. That allows me to go to assistant systems, audio, which is I'm playing live airman, for example. Uh, telephone means your phone is connected or not connected. Uh, vehicle statues, you can see what's what's going on. No entries, that means everything is working fine. Driving data, which is your driving speed. So for example, in the driving data function, we also go up and down for the arrows. So let's go up. We can see our warning for the kilometers. Oh, you can see the oil temperature. You can see the consumption, on-time consumption. You can see the average consumption since we start driving. You can see the range to empty. You can see the driving data, so it goes around pretty much. You can go up, you can go down whenever you like to change your different screen. So my favorite is obviously the digital speedo. You can also click view button that goes backwards to your vehicle uh, information place. So just the view button, doesn't really do much. Um, yeah, so those are the how to control and display the front screen. And after that, we get track controls. So right and left, obviously, that's for your last and uh, next and last uh, track controls for your radio stations or for your Bluetooth or any music you're playing on. So those are the two buttons. At the left, we've got a two buttons for the volume, plus and minus, very simple. And then we will have all these safety system buttons. So for the safety systems, we're gonna show you this button at the bottom first. So I'm gonna tap this button. Now you can see on the display, it shows land assist. ECC, speed limit, and all those information. So for the one that's been ticked, that means the function is on. So the lane assist, assist, that function is on at the moment. What that means is when the vehicle drives over 60 kilometers per hour, and the vehicle uses its sensor inbuilt at the front and to see your sort of line marking on the left or on the right. So in case you are likely to drift out your line marking, the vehicle give you a 
very st light steering uh, steering adjustment to keep in the right center so that function is on and obviously after a few seconds that will disappear so we're going to press this button again next one AC and, ACC and speed limiter so if we tap this button over here with adaptive cruise control so we're going to just simply tap this button you'll notice the cruise control light that comes on it's still gray light that means the vehicle is ready to engage the cruise control once we start driving um, on the road with a certain speed we can simply press set button to set our cruise control so and then we set your cruise control at the left bottom it's going to show for example 50 kilometers the vehicle will start moving at 50 kilometers on the road and you can change your set speed by going plus or minus so plus goes up by tens and minus goes up by tens so you're driving 50 it's going to go up to 60 70 80 kilometers um, and then if you do want to do micro adjustment you can also press set and res resume to go up by one or go down by one instead so if i'm 50 i'm gonna press set it's gonna drop down by 49 48 47 gradually uh, reset resume it uh, goes to by 51 52 53 for example that's how to change your speed while you're on cruise control and because this vehicle has the sensor again you have adaptive cruise control instead so basically press this button you'll see this graphic comes on the board so i'm gonna pre keep pressing this button again you can see the bars change in behind this vehicle so what that means is your di your vehicle's um, distance between the front vehicle is going to be changed by yourself so if you get one five bar you may increase the distance for example five to four seconds you, you drop back to one you may you may have the distance to between two seconds instead so that's your distance between the front vehicle so if you're driving on 100 or 50 but the vehicle in front of you only driving 30 k's per hour uh, your vehicle will automatically slow down to 30 to keep you in the safe distance so that's controlled by this button over here and just keep pressing it to change your distance and it will show up on your dashboard so that's how to use cruise control um, when you are starting the cruise control once you press set when you're on cruise control two ways to cancel the cruise control one way is just apply the brake that will be temporarily paused another way is to simply press this button to cancel the cruise control temporarily and then if you do want to disengage the cruise control simply press this button no cruise control again ACC deactivated that means the cruise control is off and we're just going to pull it back on again because we're going into the system so now we're on cruise control that's how to set the cruise control the car will drive itself actually and if i'm going to tap this button again you can now see the cruise control light uh, comes on that means the vehicle is on acc which is adaptive cruise control and if i'm going to ignore the cruise control i'm going to select speed limiter again select it's go up and down click ok i'm going to select speed limiter what that means is you can notice at the right bo left the bottom it shows the limit instead so this thing will completely change although the function is still the same i'm going to simply tap set and then the vehicle will set a particular kilometers on the dashboard um, i'm still i can still drive the vehicle brake and start by myself but the vehicle won't allow me to go over certain kilometers per hour for the speed let's say if you might i'm set at 50 uh, if I press the thread accelerator, the vehicle will stay uh, limit my speed to 50 kilometers per hour. Then again, you can do press plus or minus, resume and reset to change your set speed uh, for the set limiter. So that's how to use the speed limiter. You don't use this button anymore because it's not driving yourself. You are the driver. And any time, if you want to cancel it, just press this button. That's canceled. That means there's no speed limit anymore. Then press this button again it brings back to cruise control again so automatically default whenever you switch this on it's always on default that cruise control so you need to press this button and push it down to speed limit information just like that otherwise switch back on that cruise control so yeah that's how that works and at the bottom we have another one called blind spot monitoring system so on your wing mirror on the right top unfortunately we are in a rainy condition uh, you do have a indicator on the right and on the left that shows your adaptive cruise control um sorry blind spot detection that's a feature we're talking about so what that means is you're traveling along vehicle is coming behind you uh, at your blind spot and that light bar will light up on the wing mirror so at least you know someone is traveling behind you next one rear traffic alert so when you reverse out the car park and you can't see anything coming behind you on the left and right 
uh, there is a moving vehicle or moving objective the vehicle will give you a detection give you an indication that someone is behind you so give you alert on the windmill give you a very light um, sound from the dashboard as well so that's a real cross alert so again if you don't want any of this you can always just tick that uh, and tick that comes off otherwise tick it is on last one is front assist so what that means is the vehicle will have a front emergency assist um, systems so in case you are likely to crash into something or someone and uh, the vehicle give you a sort of beeping warning light on the dashboard telling you that you are likely to crash into something or someone and uh, just before you crash into something or someone the vehicle give you a full emergency brake to either slow you down or pull you to a complete stop so that's about the front assist so everything at the moment is on and yeah, you'll be okay to drive like that yeah cool we'll go to the next one so now we're gonna go through everything in the center console uh, so everything that's in the console is touch screen so there's no physical button apart from these ones volume and track control and push that off or push on uh, everything is also just a touch sensitive so first thing you want to do is for example if you aren't doing anything you can always click menu button and that allows you to go left and right to see what's available for this radio station uh, or telephone or vehicle settings all that otherwise you can click different icons so you get direct buttons for the car setting for the sounds for the setup for the radio for the media for other things um, and you will notice this wave gesture on the right hand side that allows you to wave into the screen and that goes through the screen just a very simple gimmicky feature uh, otherwise just swipe it just like your smartphone that will allow you to go through different menus first one radio so once you go on the radio station we are on preset list that's all your preset at the moment but if you are going to different areas you may have different radio stations available so all you need to do is just click station list that's all your available stations in this particular area i'm going to click one for example this is the we are listening to uh, flower and then if you want to save flower for example save it to number four um, what we need to do is just press and hold until you hear the beep very small beep now you can see this is saved at the number four um, presets or favorite stations uh, you can save up to a lot a lot of numbers for your favorite stations but numbers six numbers is one on one screen so that's how you do favorite stations uh, other ones you can just press source to change am fm or bluetooth audio whenever you like in this radio station in the settings you can also change your um how they say you can also delete your presets you can also do arrow buttons to go to preset or station list what that means is if you press this arrow button uh, the vehicle will go into presets list or station list whenever you like you can change other sound settings or that as well if you want otherwise we'll just come back to this radio so that's how to control radio click menu button again telephone and that allows you to connect your smartphone with the vehicle uh, for example uh, if I'm gonna uh, if you want to connect a smartphone with this device all you need to do is just open your phone go to your settings so if I'm gonna use my one for example I'm gonna go to my settings and go to Bluetooth and connection and uh, go into the Bluetooth screen and just pair a new device for example and we're gonna search so if you can see the name pop up my VW 5713 on this device click that and it's gonna pop up do you want to allow your contacts do you want to pay your phone so I won't allow my contacts because it's not my car but I will click pair to pay my phone and press yes on the screen itself now you can see my phone's popped up it's connected you can see the top menu you get one notification you get the phone and you get the uh, battery you get the uh, how do you say speed recovery uh, signal sort of thing yep and uh, if you do want to change anything you can see your dial number you can see your contact you can see your calls if it's authorized you can go through settings if you want to set up that many things so those are the settings for the bluetooth and if you do want to listen to music just click media and obviously click source just make sure you click bluetooth audio you click this phone uh, it's already connected actually so now whatever is uh, playing on on my phone it's gonna play through the speakers and yeah so that's how to connect smartphone with that uh, if you do have other devices so in the menu you get app connect as well so if you tap app connect we do get apple carplay and android auto through app connect so that will have to go through this bottom uh, usb um, storage space so you do need a cable to connect one of these and, and then the other side to your phone obviously 
that allows you to bring up either Apple CarPlay or Android screen. So on your Apple CarPlay, make sure you put and you make sure you have Siri uh, enabled, and then it should automatically connect. For your Android Auto, you need to make sure you are, you are stay stationary and go through all the steps to authorize the Android Auto connection. Yep, so that's the phone connection. Next one, we got vehicles. So there's a lot of settings, everything that we can display over here. First thing is your, if you're on the screen, you can go left and right to see your um, monitoring system, so to see your vehicle statues. Um, this vehicle is equipped with all the uh, tire pressure monitoring system. And it doesn't display here, but if you have one of your tire pressure is too low, it's going to give you a warning on the dashboard. And then you once you, you need to go over the obviously to the nearest petrol station, the nearest the tire station to get it checked. And uh, once it's fixed, press set to reset the tire pressure. On the left, you get selections. You can see driving data, which is your, um, how do you say, long-term fuel consumption, all that things, or refueling fuel consumptions. Uh, otherwise, vehicle statues that brings back us to the screen again. Then go to the right bottom. We got settings. So in the settings, there are tons of features to set it up. So first one, that's your electronic stability control system. So at the moment, it's activated. That means that system is is, is on to help you with your safeties. Um, so you don't want to switch it off, obviously. But if you are going to let's say off roll or anything like that, you can switch it off just by tap that button. TCS off. And tires, that's your tire, tire pressure monitoring system, so you can reset it by set this button. So if your tire pressure is okay, there's no warning light, you don't need to do anything about that. And in case you are driving in very, uh, how do you say, snowy conditions, you get winter tires, you get speed warning, but you don't want to take that if you're driving as normal. Lights, so that allows you to change your switch on light for auto lights, you can do headlight range, you can do auto highlight range, all sorts of things. So you can do these things um, by yourself. You can manipulate the, the function. Uh, coming home function and leaving home function is pretty much when you lock, unlock the vehicle, uh, your headlight stays on for about 10 seconds. So you can see your driveway. Again, you can change this to longer or shorter or even off. Otherwise, we can go back. Parking and uh, maneuvering. So you can active automatically. So what that means is when you go forward uh, close to something, uh, your vehicle will automatically uh, switch on the parking sensor at the front, give you uh, give you a warning sort of thing. You can change your vol volume and tone setting to high or low, and front and rear. Uh, so you can actually change your entertainment volume reduction left and right as well. That means your radio or your music is going to lower the volume automatically when your parking sensor is on. Maneuver braking, so this is a cool feature or can be annoying at the same time. Uh, so when you reverse and uh, something's behind you, if you are, your reverse speed is too high, the vehicle will actually give you an emergency brake before you crash into something or someone. So recommend it to be on just in case you crash into something or someone, uh, so, but you may experience that occasionally. Uh, rear traffic cross alert, we've talked about, about that earlier on the screen. Uh, next one, we get mirrors and wipers. So sync uh, adjustments. So what that means is, if you uh, if you switch, uh, if you use the rear mirror on the right hand side, and um, that push up, your left rear mirror actually go up uh, at the same time for with the right rear mirror. But if you are using, if you point to left rear mirror, go up and down, your right rear mirror doesn't go up and down automatically. So that's the sync adjustment. If you don't like it, some we get some people really upset about this feature. So just take it off. So it doesn't. You you, you just adjust them individually. So it doesn't sync together. So if that makes sense. Uh, lower in reverse gear. That means when you put on the car in reverse, your left rear mirror will lower itself. So again. Some people like it, some people hate it, so I'm gonna leave it on just because that's the factory reset, the factory settings. Fold in when locking, so basically when you lock the vehicle, that automatically folds in. Uh, again, it's recommended to be on, my preference. Wipers, wipe automatically in range so you get the auto wiper. If you don't like auto wiper, you can disengage this, so you can adjust, manually adjust the speed on the uh, windscreen, uh, windscreen wiper. Rear windscreen wiping in reverse gear, that means we feel windscreen at the front is on auto or on position you put the vehicle on reverse your rear windscreen wiper will wipe about four to five three four to four times when you put it on reverse next one opening closing uh, so you get convenience opening so at the moment it's off so it doesn't do anything but if i'm going to switch to all windows what that means is i've got a i've got a key with me and when the vehicle is either locked or unlocked um, i can control it from distance press 
pressing hold and lock button all the windows will go up and by pressing hold and the unlock button all the windows will drop down so that's how to operate this convenience opening otherwise you can always do driver window or all windows or just off so personally i quite like all windows because you know how summer you want you want to unlock it before you're jumping next one central locking obviously that's all doors but if you only want to unlock single door each time that means when you touch the door handle or when you unlock the door from the key only once driver door unlocks or just the vehicle side so only the right hand side front and back unlocks otherwise my preference is all doors and then you get lock automatic when driving so once you reach a particular speed the vehicle do the central locking so personally i like that as well interior monitoring so that that pretty much means if your vehicle is locked and if someone is in the vehicle or uh, you get a, a animal inside the vehicle the vehicle will have that motion detection so it'll give you a warning in case someone is locked in the vehicle after that we get instrument cluster so you get different trip volumeter controls all that things you can you can manipulate these things you can also reset driving data you can also reset long-term driving data as well nothing serious about that time and date you can manually change your time and date if you like otherwise you can also take um, summertime and take summertime all that things as well and this is not powered by gps i believe so you don't you won't be able to choose this one by gps for this particular model units that's basically your new zealand standard units but if you leave somewhere else or if you prefer any other thing just click and you can change bar psi kpa all that things so yeah that's all about the vehicle settings in this setup menu next we're gonna go sound so that's pretty easy you can change whatever you like for your sound stereo you can change your positions just in the center or before and before the little bit backwards you can change your volume uh, a little bit quiet a little bit loud on the bluetooth all those things you can change this and you get other settings for your touch screen tone so when you touch something it's gonna beep i personally don't like it you can change the menu touch tone as well just audible hand and uh, just the feedback that's your wave at the left and right this is not, not nothing serious so yeah that's about the menu screen and after that you get media again that's for your bluetooth otherwise you can do anything on like media all that things when you connect your phone as bluetooth app connect we've already done that so just use a cable to connect your apple carplay assistance that's pretty much the same with this button a little bit more detailed so if you are in assistance click settings you can see all the features that's available for the assistance systems we've already done front assist we've done the line assist we've done blind spot detection we've done adaptive cruise control we're gonna go to driver alert system so if you're gonna drive the vehicle for con continuously three to five hours the vehicle may give you warnings as you need to take a rest so that's the information for that particular system uh, occupant protection pretty much means the, when the vehicle is in danger um, the seatbelt is going to uh, help you to keep you in a safe place in case something unfortunate happens um, otherwise you get driving you can change to comfort you can change to sport for the type of cruise control you can change the distance again anything you press information it's going to show up what it is all about so that's all the, the systems by pressing menu that's the systems after that air conditioning so we get two zone climate control you can see left is 22 degree right is 22 degree and synced that means if i'm going to change anything up here up there it's going to follow me otherwise it's just display for the air conditioning you can always control everything over here anyway so i'll go through that later next one you get help that's your not yet your just uh, guidance all that things in case you can't you can't you miss anything uh, settings that's for the screen settings you can set up screen burners you can set up these touch tones all that things uh, you can set up time and day you can set up your language you can set these things you can reset the factory reset as well otherwise that's pretty simple yeah um, i think that's all about the screen and um, in case you have any questions you can always leave a comment otherwise we'll go to next so below the screen we are now having three buttons on here so the first one is auto stop start so every time you switch on the vehicle this function is ready to engage what that does what that do is the vehicle switch the engine off at traffic lights and switch it back on again if you don't like it you just press this button orange light comes on on the dashboard says stop start system deactivated so that means that function is not going to engage anymore has a light press the button has a light parking sensors uh, you can engage the parking sensor yourself otherwise when the vehicle is on reverse or when the vehicle gets something at the front automatically that will engage as well 
Um, otherwise, when you use some, occasionally when you put on camera reverse, you can see the parking sensor and reverse camera comes up. And if you don't want the parking sensor to be beeping, you still want the camera, you still, uh, you just don't like the parking sensor beeping, you can switch it off so you can just watch your parking yourself. Um, air conditioning, so front windscreen, uh, top um, windscreen, that's your direction, bottom, uh, bottom for the aircon, and recirculation, and you get temperature on the left or temperature on the right. And you get sync button so you press sync that means two temperatures connected to each other so it'll follow the driver temperature ac obviously you want ac on your hot summer you can do max ac as well if you jump in the vehicle and it's really hot just direct press max ac you get menu that will bring up the menu on the top shows you how the air conditioning is, is going on off obviously let's switch everything off and switch it back on just switch this dial for and that's your fan speed control as well you get auto, you get a front windscreen, you get rear demister. So very simple, nothing too too bad. If you're familiar with the Volkswagen car, this is very easy to get used to. Push button, that's what we talked about to start the vehicle. I mean, so you stop the vehicle, just one touch again. Uh, 12 volt socket, that's your another charging point. Otherwise, you can use these two USB points. Um, parking, uh, that's on park, reverse, normal, uh, neutral, drive. And if you do want to shift to sports, just shift it down to shift it to sports on your dashboard it's going to show up on the top right by the way and shift it to down again that's on drive then shift your left that's your menu mode so you can go off forward backwards to plus and minus your gear change otherwise shift it back electric handbrake so push to release pull to put it on you get the light over here you also get the parking light down there so that means your parking brake is on uh, if you have your seat belts on we put the vehicle on drive and push, press, the, press the throttle, the vehicle automatically release the handbrake anyway. Then after that, you get auto hold. So press that button, the auto hold is engaged. That means when you come to a complete stop, the vehicle will hold your handbrake for you. So you don't need to hold your brake all the time. And then when you're ready to go again, just press the throttle, the vehicle release your auto hold handbrake by, by itself going forward. So your car doesn't go backwards at traffic lights or on uphill. Uh, when you're auto hold, it's gonna show green light instead of red light at the front. So that's how the auto hold works. And after that, two cup holders and very small storage. And you get all your owner's menu, everything in the glove box. Uh, everything's pretty simple. Air vents, you can switch off or switch on for the air vents. And uh, mirror, uh, rear wing mirror, and the lighting control, so off and or door or on position. So this means when your door is unlocked, that um, that um, light will light up. And front light, reading light, uh, all the reading lights. Otherwise, switch it off in neutral position. So yeah, everything's pretty simple, but easy to get used to. If you're gonna, if you have driven a Volkswagen before, you're gonna be very familiar with this vehicle. But hopefully, this video will help you in case this is your first Volkswagen vehicle. And um, I hope this helped in some way. And uh, if you are. Um, you're interested you can subscribe to the channel and that will help me to grow and leave a like below as well uh, we'll see you in the next video thank you very much